Oh, hi guys. Um, this is a short video, going to be very short, on how to solve the problem where you have your new Ryzen processor, in this case from the Ryzen 9 3900X, and you have your new motherboard, you're going to do a new build, then when you've finished it, you come to set the BIOS on the BIOS screen, and you get a black screen, so there's no, um, it seems that there's no BIOS. So you spend a lot of time doing research and um, you come across all these solutions, you know, swapping memory sticks, uh, taking this CMOS battery out, um, downloading new BIOS from the uh, manufacturer's website, loading that on, and um, various other tics and t t t t tips and tricks, you know, checking for C the CPU that the pins are, are not bent, etc. Um, well, in my case, I built uh, PCs before, but not for a few years. My last one was a, an AMD as well. But um, I'm just going to show you now how I solved mine problem with the black screen. Um, after many hours during the whole week trying to research and not having any success, ordering a new um, uh, Rod, Rog Strix X570E gaming motherboard. So I have two now. Uh, when all along it was something very simple to, that would have solved my problem. I even called Asus up direct in America, spent the best part of 45 minutes on the phone with them. They went through some tests with me and I told them, you know, my problem and what board it was, um, you know, the serial numbers and things like that. They changed everything out. I spoke to three different people and they said, um, that uh, if the downloaded BIOS didn't fix it, then send the board back and they would replace it to Amazon. So, fantastic. So I wasted another day there messing around with it. But um, in reality, it was all so simple. And I'm gonna show you why it was so simple right now. Um, I'm gonna share my screen uh, so you can see. Well, I will in a minute. Just let me show you my setup first. Okay, hey, here's the motherboard. The, as you can see, the ROG Strix X570 e Gaming. I bought the Ryzen 9 processor. Uh, it comes with its own uh, um, CPU cooler. Well, I've set this up and down two or three times, uh, testing things. I've had the power in. This was uh, in the beginning, it was inside my new Corsair 4000X iCube, um, an RGB case, uh, an RGB board. And everything was working, flashing lights, the fans were working. Um, the only thing that wasn't working was the screen. As you see up here, I have a nice screen here, my HP 34 inch QLED. Um, so I did all the usual things, change screens, change cables, change ports, nothing worked. So um, this is my second board, which I'm going to set up tomorrow. The other board is over there in the box to go back to Amazon. Um, but there's no reason to send it back, really. I shouldn't have ordered this because the board was, there was nothing wrong with it. I, I've now found out. So what you'll find out is, the first tip is, never put the board in the PC tower and make all these cabling nice and, and smart like I did, spend hours on it, and then turn it on and see if it works. That's the wrong way to do it. All you need to do first is put it on a, you know, a non-conductive surface like wood or plastic, maybe not plastic, probably foam, um, or, or the, even the box it came in, put the board there, then put your power in, um, depending on your motherboard. Um, then the only thing you need to do then is put your HDMI cable in, and then uh, turn it on by one of these pins here. You can see how to do that online, but if your cable's long enough, you can get the on off cable and then press the button on the case but if not there is a couple of pins there you just short them out and then it, it will turn on 
So that is all you need to get the screen up and running and for it to work. But there's one thing that most newbies like myself to doing this that don't do this on a regular basis. The Ryzen set of processors um, do not allow these ports for the display to work. There is no memory in the chip uh, that supports it. So it will never ever work. You will never get any display off these Ryzen chips. Even though the board, this is a for a Ryzen board, this is for a Ryzen processor, but they nowhere do they tell you that a Ryzen processor needs its own GPU or graphics card that goes here. And you have to plug in your HDMI cable or your display port into that graphics card because the processor does not support the ports, the video ports. You have to have a separate card. So it took me at least 20 hours during the week to find this out and nowhere on the internet could I find that out. But what I'm going to do now is show you where I did find it out and how you can find it out on your motherboard. So let me go to my screen and share my screen. Okay, on the AMD website, it doesn't tell you anything about the processor and the fact that it needs a graphics card for, for it to work on your motherboard. It doesn't mention it. And to be honest with you, with the Ryzen processors, there isn't as much information there at the moment because it's so new, I suppose, um, like there are with other older processors. So it doesn't say that the, 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 the CPU doesn't have any graphics support capability. It doesn't say it. So what I did was, um, I went on to the Google, as we all do these days, and did a search for um, specifications for my processor, so you can do this for yours. And then uh, I looked down on the full specs, and uh, it actually says somewhere here that uh, it doesn't support... That's the wrong one, actually. This is the, the AMD site. It gives you, this is all the information it gives you about the Ryzen 9 3900X. Very little information. But if you go on Google, there's lots of sites come up. Uh, but this one called techpowerup.com. This had um, much more specifications uh, for me to check. And you can see here where it says uh, about the processor cores integrated graphics. NA, it doesn't have it doesn't have integrated graphics. That's why your on onboard motherboard um, graphics capability will not work with the Ryzen processor. You need a separate GPU, graphics card, video card, whatever you want to call it. So that is the answer. Once you get that card, mine arrives tomorrow. I'll be putting it in the the motherboard. And I know for certain that this motherboard will work because I actually rang up um, Asus again and told them why they didn't ask them why they didn't tell me that the Ryzen needs a separate uh, graphics card, and they said it was a mistake. Um, AMD Ryzen haven't replied yet about my question to them about does it support on integrated graphics cards, so I'm still waiting for that. Um, what I did in the meantime during my exploration, exploration of finding out why this wasn't working um, on, on um, Asus's advice, Rog, Rog Strict, they sent me the link to download the, the latest BIOS um, and the instructions on how to do it. Um, so I did download that and I did put it onto a chip, a USB just there. If you're going to do this, it has to be a 32-bit uh, chip, um, not 16. 
Um, so you have to format it until there's nothing on it. Then you will uh, you'll you'll download the file. I can actually show you that file actually, since we're on about this, because that was quite complicated as well. It doesn't tell you certain things; they just tell you to rename the file. So I'll show you now what I had to do. I put it on my desktop where most stuff goes. And uh, what you get is this file here. See this Rod Shrix E Gaming? Well, the instructions tell you to rename the file. So unless you're familiar with operating with file systems, um, you may think this will just work if you put it onto your USB flash drive. But it doesn't. You have to uh, extract it. And the, these are the files inside it. And when they say rename the file and they tell you what to call it, they, uh, you don't rename the file. What you do is you click this here that says BIOS Renamer and that renames the file for you. So you have to extract it first. You get these three files, click the BIOS renamer, and it will rename it to this here, SX570EG. Um, so I'll click that again, so you can see this window opens up, press any key to continue, and then it will uh, rename the file. So what you need then is this file here, the rename file, it's around 32 megabytes. That's the one that was sent. This is the only thing that needs to remain on your pen drive, your USB drive, your USB stick that you've formatted. And you just copy and paste that onto it. And then uh, depending on the motherboard, you may have a button where you can just uh, automatically load it in. Um, on the later motherboards. Other motherboards, you may have to go into the BIOS. That, we haven't got time to do that here, but look on, online on YouTube and you will see uh, for your motherboard how to load the new BIOS on. There are several steps to it. My board is pretty easy though. Um, if you've got one of these, the modern boards, there is actually a port that is for the bias, which is there. It's on the instructions. I see it says bias. Once you once it's in there, you don't need the processor in. You don't need any memory or anything. Uh, all you need is the power. So when you uh, you put that in. There we go. Yeah, once it's powered up, you've put your um, power supply on, then you need to turn the, the motherboard on so it lights up uh, with a couple of these pins here. It's, it'll say on your motherboard instructions. You just sh short them out and the whole thing will turn on. Uh, this is when you can press this button on the side here. You hold it for three seconds. A light will start flashing. And it will continue to flash for around anything from one to three minutes. Then when it's finished, it will um, go out. And then you know it's finished updating the BIOS. Um, this board has a feature where you can keep the old BIOS and then load the new BIOS into a new area. Then when the, the board is restarted, it uses the new BIOS, but it the, the old bias is still there in case there's any errors, so it won't ruin the board if you lose the bias. Um, so that is for for this board. And then when you you uh, next power it up, it will have the latest bias on it. One other thing I found out during my research this week is that 
a lot of these motherboards, uh, the newer ones, they, they basically don't work when they arrive because the bias is out of date. So you'll have lots of different issues uh, with the board until you get the new bias on. So if you're building a new system with a, a new later board, um, you will more than likely have to update the bias before you do anything else. So do some research on how to do that. The modern, mod, the modern boards will have a button that you press and load it in. Um, but just follow the instructions or watch a video on how to do it. Once you've done it, it's really, really easy. There's nothing to it, but it is complicated if you do, try to do it and you do it the wrong way, like putting in a, an unzipped file into here rather than uh, putting in a zipped file rather than an unzipped one, and also not removing the uh, the zipped file once you've unzipped it and, and changed the name. Uh, there's no need for the other files. All you need is the one that's been renamed. So I think that's it. I'll find out tomorrow um, if this will work. But I've been on all the boards and asked questions and all the advice I've had is that this graphics card, once it's here, will uh, will give me the display. The bias is already loaded because I saw it loading. So this will work tomorrow, but it will never ever work here because this port will not work with a Ryzen processor and I be, I've been told it's all the Ryzen processors apart from the 4000s and the 5000s and um, so be aware of that it's going to save you a lot of time okay guys and girls got any questions please leave comments below or send me an email thank you very much hope you enjoyed watching it's been a learning curve for me and for you. Bye now.